London, home of buildings, rivers, trees, park benches, and pigeons. The rats of the sky. But things weren't always so awesome. Just cast your minds back to 1666 when the Great Fire of London swept through the city after a visionary baker on Pudding Lane went to town on a creme brulee. One can't help but summon the words of the great English author Mark Twain, history does not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Extra, extra, read all about it. Ladies and gentlemen, London is burning. Burning your precious ether. Okay, not the smoothest of transitions, but I'm going to go with it. <laughs> and as the Great Fire of London in 1666 was said to wipe out the rats harboring the deadly bubonic plague, the London Hard Fork of 1559 has been touted by some fringe scientists as a possible cure to the coronavirus. How, you may ask? By making you filthy rich. Yes, as hard as it is to believe, Ethereum's long and winding road towards 2.0 has taken a detour to good old London town. They're calling it the London Hard Fork. Kind of an anti-Yuri Jeller protocol. So what makes this fork so damn hard? And what the hell is EEP 1559? Well, as most of you will know all too well, Ethereum has been blighted by some fairly hefty gas fees of late, to put it diplomatically. Think of it as blockchain's equivalent to the London congestion zone, which has been using the inner city's road network unfeasibly expensive for your average Joe. Ethereum Improvement Protocol 1559 seeks to solve the issue with a radical overhaul to the transaction fee mechanism and a promise to bring cheap and cheerful gas fees to all. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> Until now, Ethereum's gas fees have effectively gone to the highest bidder. Users wishing to make transactions on the blockchain would generally fall into two camps. High rolling fat cats bribing their way to the front of the queue. It's at 270 million, the hand goes up. And us regular folk who grew wearily accustomed to the delicate dance of trying to calculate the lowest possible gas fee that might one day, years from now, possibly, maybe, eventually clear before crossing our fingers and hoping for the best. Enter EEP 1559. Woo! Superhero landing. Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. Which promises to level the playing field by setting a base fee for every transaction block. Sounds a bit like communism. Those pesky Russians. <laughs> what? The update will also include a mechanism to keep blocks operating at around 50% capacity, which should prevent any nefarious miners artificially congesting the network to line their pockets with higher gas fees. Instead, the fee will fluctuate automatically depending on how full a block is at any given time. However, in the free market of magical money, users will still be able to distinguish themselves by including an additional tip. Think palming the doorman with a wad of freshly minted guay to ensure you're well catered to. All in though, tips included, EAP 1559 should see gas fees massively reduced to something vaguely sustainable. <laughs> Only time will tell. Can you smell that? It smells like burned ETH? Or is that what you would smell when you're about to keel over? Keel over and die. Anyway, the anti Yuri Jeller London Hard Fork also ushers in a new deflationary era to the blockchain. Yep, EEP 5059, I'm getting tired of saying that, will introduce the long anticipated self immolation mechanism to Ethereum in which radical ethers will burn themselves to death for the greater good. So those base fees we talked about will be going out in a blaze of self-sacrificial glory, mitigating against Ethereum's theoretically uncapped supply. There's a nebulous concept in advanced econ economics called uh, supply and demand. For simpletons, this basically means that the more people want something and the less of there it is, it becomes hot property. Supply goes down, price goes up. You're, you're, you're welcome. But don't just take my word for it. Even the oracle otherwise known as Jim Cramer has declared his undying allegiance to Ethereum in a typically agitated display on CNBC last week. He said he liked Ethereum because people actually use it much more to be able to buy things. When in fact he should have said people actually use it much more to buy things. But I'm just being pedantic now. Jim's 
not a words guy. He's a numbers man, a consummate paper stacker. And what Jim says usually goes south. But Vitalik was pretty damn gratified to have Kramer's endorsement. So, so gratified he was even doing a happy dance at a development meeting. All jokes aside, given the unprecedented explosion of NFT and DeFi in recent months, Kramer's sweaty fingers are presumably on the pulse here. As data from CryptoQuant confirms, the amount of ETH being staked on 2.0 has seen a dramatic rise in recent weeks, amounting to the handsome tune of over $13 billion, or roughly 5% of all ETH in circulation. Now locked and loaded, Ethereum inches towards proof of stake with 2.0, the anticipation and hype is steadily reaching fever pitch. But now onto a quick update from the black sheep of the family, the wayward Ethereum classic. After years of soul searching in the forgotten depths of the internet, 2021 saw Ethereum classic playing the role of unlikely hero after Redditors decided it would be a fitting candidate for a little bit of market manipulation, which saw its price pump a staggering 700%. It appeared Ethereum Classic didn't quite know how to handle this newfound attention, and it soon retreated to a more comfortable spot in the shadows it had grown accustomed to. However, a recent and notable first upgrade to Ethereum Classic with a very cool name, Magneto, saw a price pump of a whopping, and I do mean whopping, 7%. Still, pretty big stuff for the this washed up has been. Poor Ethereum Classic has a pretty tragic origin story. It came into being in 2016 after a major dispute in the Ethereum community over a controversial hard fork. Here are the cliff notes. Please allow me some dramatic license. In 2016, a mysterious venture capital fund called DAO was built on the Ethereum network with an investment of over $186 million. But this was no fortress. And it turned out DAO was subject to some pretty serious security flaws. The gates were breached, and some geeky, bespectacled bandits snuck in and nicked over 14% of Ethereum locked up in the vaults. Two camps emerged. One, led by the wizened battle-axe Charles Hoskinson, took the position that since this was a decentralized network, the ETH was gone, and there was nothing anyone could do about it. But his arch-rival, this spindly ninja Vitalik Buterin, decided to lead a recovery mission to retrieve the stolen treasure. They ventured into the belly of the beast, summoning a new hard fork to help them on their mission. But some defiant nodes dug in their heels and refused to accept this fork, only to have their fate sealed for them. They continued to run ye old Ethereum without the new update, and so was born the mutant child. The cast down an OG Ethereum classic. And yes, it's had a troubled life in the years since, but rumor has it, do not quote me on this, that none other than Charles Hoskinson has assumed a role as a kind of unofficial godfather figure, with IOHK lending their wisdom to help develop Ethereum Classic, and recent updates potentially heralding a new chapter for this story token. What will the future hold? Who knows, but with some kindly Uncle Charles as something of a champion, anything is possible. Anyway, that's it for the full Ethereum family update. Plenty of drama, intrigue, and possibly positive price potential. That's a lot of peas enjoyed on both sides of the aisle. Leave a like if you enjoyed, hit subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. I post bite-sized content over there. See you on the next one.